Hey guys, I'm Tactical Doodle. You may recognize me from the Nut and Fancy Project in the past. I've been in a couple videos. I'm still on the camera today to talk a little bit about gift giving and holiday buying for guys like us. It's kind of tough. And honestly, every year we get these articles that tell us to buy, you know, some random new stuff. Under $20, under $50, under $75, under $100, $100 plus? No. I don't know. People always overthink it. So I'm going to give you some gift giving principles to kind of apply to someone in your life. This kind of mostly applies to guys too. I mean, I have no idea what to buy women. Well, I kind of do. I've given some cool stuff in the past, but still, it's easier for me because I am a young guy. So keep in mind, this is all my opinion. This is just stuff that I like and some personal beliefs. Now remember, my opinion can't be worth that much because my fashion icon is Styles from Teen Wolf. Seriously, how cool is that shirt? All right, so gifts are pretty simple. To me, it kind of shows how much that person means to you, how valuable they are, and you can even sometimes infer a monetary value, how much money or how much of your time, because it takes your time to earn money, that person is worth to you. For me, I like to put thought into it, and I also like to give something a utility. Something that they use all the time, that's gonna be awesome. Something that they use all the time, that's quality, even better. Something that combines those two characteristics and looks good doing it, even better. There are some things that you can get someone that will last forever, or at least most of their lifetime and some of their children's, that they'll keep using even if they break up with you. I'm assuming this is kind of a romantic entanglement thing because that's usually the people you get it for. You know, adults buying things for kids, really easy. Kids buying things for adults, a little harder. For the kids, you don't really have like tons of income to use, so you guys kind of get a free pass. You can like draw them a picture of a flower or something and they're gonna be super ecstatic because as a parent you have to pretend to be for that kind of stuff, I guess. I don't know, not a parent. Poor kid, whoever is parented by me. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the actual gifts you can buy and just a couple ideas because they're things that, while I love them, not fancy, kind of like some of them, a couple of them he loves, they're things that we don't really address in the project. More than anything, it's about the philosophy because the philosophy of gift giving is pretty simple. You want it to be, at least for guys in my demographic, keep in mind, probably more of the cops, the firefighters, military, constitution, law enforcement, all that stuff. Those guys, we generally like stuff that's functional. So one, make it functional. Don't give us some weird potted plant that serves no purpose. Maybe if the plant grows like vegetables that we can eat, then it's a purpose, but even still, it seems like a lot of work for a little reward. So make it something that we need and something that we wanna use every day. Something that's functional that we maybe overlook in our day-to-day -day life. If you see us struggling with something or we hate some piece of our equipment, we hate something that we use every day, something would make our lives brighter by replacing, that's where you should start looking. Now. When you get that thing, you ought to look at how you can make it better. How can you get one that's more aesthetically pleasing? But before you go to that, how can you make sure that that something is quality? There are all kinds of things that may last forever, but they don't look that good. Those are usually better. I have a chair in my room that's from like 1955. It is ugly as I'll get out, which I guess now is coming into fashion, but I haven't had to replace it in forever. Meanwhile, the cheesy office chair, I originally got to replace that because it was hardwood and uncomfortable, it's already falling apart after less than a year of use. So that's kind of a data point for you. So before we go into what you buy, I wanna talk about why you buy it and how you should go about buying it. Because a lot of people tend to give stuff that they think is cute, fun, chintzy, or interesting in the moment, but later on it gets tossed in the garbage like a week from the point it was received. So when I give a gift, and this is all just my personal experience, this is just what I like and what I've kind of learned over the course of my very many 20 some odd years, I'm a young jackass, so don't listen to my opinion with very much weight. I've just kind of taken to getting stuff that lasts. You know, being Nothing Fancy's kid, it's been an interesting opportunity to see stuff come in and out throughout the years. And he's always been like this. Don't think for a minute that it's some new development. It's actually been around for a long time. One thing he's always done is broken down sequentially stuff in his everyday life that pissed him off and he's gotten rid of it. We'll go over that in a second. but. When I give a gift, I try to get something that, one, is functional, and two, is quality. Now, quality can mean a couple different things. Quality can mean it does what it wants to do very well, like this chapstick, which is pretty cool, or it lasts, and it does it well. There are all kinds of different things, depending on what its purpose is. But either way, you want to give something that you would want to receive. That doesn't mean some kind of, you know, weird fad thing you're getting on. One thing that gets really irritating come Christmas time is everyone's giving each other gifts that they're trying to, like, I don't know, propagate with everybody else. I don't want to receive some newfangled shower radio caddy that you just discovered on Pinterest last week because you think it's great. Get me something proven. Saddleback Leather has it right when they say, it's so good your kids will fight over it when you're dead. You want to give stuff like that. You want to give stuff that haunts people forever, and it's rare. 
But when you give something that has longevity to it, it's just going to last. That's a part of you that stays with that person forever and it shows you and them how much you mean to each other. By how much you're willing to spend on someone else, you know how much they're worth to you, at least in some kind of dollar form. And they get to see how much thought you put into it. It's cute to put in a thought and just say, yeah, she needs a sweater because I like giving her sweaters. Or in this case, more geared towards the girlfriends because you guys seriously, you suck at buying us stuff. You give us weird stuff that we don't know how to use and it's cutesy and it's frilly and it's pointless. Throw pillows? Never give us throw pillows. We hate those. I don't even understand what they're for. Don't give us, I don't know, little weird pictures of us framed. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. It just goes on my wall and I promptly ignore it. I don't know. See, I can't even think. I've gotten so many bad gifts over the years from girls, I don't even remember them. They've been blocked out of my memory. I just remember having to get it from them, opening it, and going, Oh, that's cool. I can't wait to use this and put it on my wall and look at it doesn't work so things that I've gotten from people not many that I've kept it was kinda of tough doing this because seriously who keeps most of the stuff we get but I will show you a couple of the ones first is not even something that I got it's something that dad got in like 1983 so actually probably even earlier I don't know who knows that chronology check out these bitch and Ray bands from 1980 something or other probably 85 these are something that Nothing fancy, as a dude got from his girlfriend Leela back in the day. Here's a mock-up of her because we don't have an actual picture. That doesn't look a lot like her, but it's fairly close, I assume. I'm only working off an oral history here, so we kind of have to take some liberties. But these things, think about. It's been, what, 30 years since they dated, and I'm still talking about her. And I was monocellular at the time. That's pretty impressive. I may just wear these for the rest of it because they're pretty comfortable even though my fat head is too big for him. That's a good gift. That's going to stay with him forever and ever and ever. You don't give him some, you know, shower radio or some as-seen-on-TV personal massager. It won't last. Ask him how it is in a year, then you'll see that they threw it away after a week. That's usually how it works. It's, ooh, this is good. This is one of the few things I have kept from past relationships because, honestly, this does, in a way, haunt me. I can't get rid of it. It's a nice watch. It's not super expensive or anything. It's like an Armatron or something, so it's probably like 60 to 80 bucks, I'm sure. But this girl actually went through and engraved it. And at the time, looking back, I'm sure she didn't think that we would ever actually pan out seriously because she didn't engrave it with love or an anniversary date or anything stupid like that. She marked me like chattel, and it was kind of frightening. If you look at it, it actually just, and I'm just gonna kind of blank out part of her name. I don't know if you can see that. It says her name like Sarah loves you. Not, you know, any kind of normal human expression of love. It's just this unit loves you. Kind of unnerving. But notice how I still have it and we've been broken up for years. Yeah. And before you get all sad about whatever I'm saying about this girl, she kind of sort of cheated on me with like three guys like two years after this. So whatever. Not a big deal. So, you're getting stuff for your guy and you want to think about what he likes or what he actually uses. You want quality, you want longevity, and you want function. Guys love function because it makes our lives better. I don't really understand the point of getting decorative stuff unless it does something for me. If you look at my room, which I'm sure you have, like in the left right game and that little patch update, you'll see a lot of the stuff on there is functional. I have a guitar. I have a shelf full of books. I have a typewriter that I do use. I have a bunch of old World War II guns. Those are things that have function and aesthetic value to me. If you look at the things that I do have that are for purely aesthetic value, like this, I get them because those hit some kind of sweet spot of me. Honestly, it's more like something I couldn't get as a kid, but I wanted. But now that I have some measure of disposable income, I can actually get them, which is a horrible idea. But I do love them. Anyways, it all means something. So, so when I do gifts, I generally look for two things. I look for function, and I look for quality. As long as those two things are there, then I can get on to the kind of esoteric stuff about style and, you know, flavor, whatever. It's all kind of beside the point if it's useful. So, in your daily life, you want to look at things that you use most often that frustrate you. For me, those are things like pens, scissors, seriously, dull scissors, and you probably have them. They drive me insane, okay? Just get a good pair, use them, they're awesome, 
They're pretty much the best things you'll ever use on a day-to-day -day basis. These things, you can hear them. That's rare. Don't have a little cheesy piece of left-handed plastic scissors you're supposed to... No. Get it squared away and move on with your life. It's just minutes you shave off of each day that you aren't pissed and it just makes everything go better. So on your desk, I would have a pair of these. Good ones. I think these are, yeah, these are Fiskars. They're probably like five, six bucks. Buy them, sharpen them if you need to, and move on. Also, I like sewing scissors. I use these for cutting threads and honestly, small wounds. If I get funky stuff sticking out, I get injured all the time. My hand's actually healing up, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and other things in there, nail clippers. How many of you have really bad nail clippers? I would square that away immediately. Trick for the guys, get toenail clippers. It does mean edges and it doesn't look so cute, but guess what? It takes you two clips and it even has a little thing to hold all your nails in. You're welcome. You don't have to do it over the sink or the trash like a crow magnet. Other things, useful stuff. And that's kind of what the project's all about anyway. It's all about getting stuff that's gonna last and it's gonna work, function, blah, 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 blah. We've heard it a thousand times. So this is a Stylus Pro that my dad sent me a long time ago. And I used it for a long time. This thing has been with me in all kinds of adventures, all kinds of places. You can see that's actually a toddler who chewed off the end cap there. When I was volunteering, I was stupid enough to give him my light and he spent half an hour chewing on it. But all this wear is honest wear and it's mine. That's something that really bonds me to these things that I have. You know, like this jacket. At one point in time, it was in someone's closet and it smelled hopefully a lot better than it does now because it smells like an old man's fart. But it lasts. It's a piece of leather that you have forever. This light has been with me three, four years. I've dropped it down freaking rock hollows and it's been in all kinds of... I took it to waterfalls one time and I lost it in the bottom and could only find it because it was turned on. Pretty lucky. So that's cool. It's something useful. Pens. I like G2s. I like roller balls and I like this, uh, I think it's a Dr. Gel. I seriously got this in 2007 and I remember because I had a blue one that my best friend Bobby stole. He was kind of a douchebag. <coughs> Suck Bobby. He stole me that one because it was blue. This one's a G2 normal. Just buy a pack of these and call it a day. Seriously, they're awesome. If you like thicker stuff, this is the 730R, I don't know, whatever. Pretty good. Bic, really thick. I like writing effortlessly. Tool, they also do some good stuff. Or if you're really nerdy, you can have one of the, uh, you know, old school fountain pens as a disposable one. Whatever floats your boat. The fountain pens are cool because you can refill them. So, so let's talk about a couple of things that I personally absolutely love. First of all, when I'm given a gift, besides the tiny stuff, by the way, Pentel eraser, totally awesome. Get one of those. I don't have a new one because whatever. Zippo lighter. This is one of the smaller things. If you're a smoker, if you use fire, I don't know. It's one of those things you don't think about until you actually need it. I use it to singe hems all the time, so this is a common desk item for me. And no joke, I found this thing about 3,200 miles from home in the mud, and it was completely beat to hell, and I brought it back to life. That's Zippo for you. Made in America, I think they're like 20 bucks a piece or something. Pretty good lighters. He doesn't like them because they're metal and they're heavy, but sometimes you gotta get heavy in order to have something last forever. So as you can see, we kind of diverge on a couple things. This is probably not something I would take backpacking, but then again, I always have to pack the heavy stuff anyway, so in the end, it's kind of a moot point. What else do we have here? We got a lot of, actually, we don't have that much cool stuff. Honestly, I tried looking for crappy gifts that I've gotten through the years, and then I realized I threw them all away when I got them. I don't have any stupid things, any frilly. Honestly, looking back, I can't even remember what I got. I just remembered not liking it. So I'll try to talk about the stuff that I do like, like the Ray-Bans. Smart choice, Leela. Also, if you have a daughter, so let's check out something that every guy gets when they're in high school from all their girls. The blanket. We have too many blankets already. Date one, two, three girls in high school, you will end up with five blankets somehow. And they're always some kind of fleece affair that's tied off in little cutesy bows or something in the end. They always come untangled. All it does is gather dog hair, okay? Not that great. I guess there's kind of an idea there where, you know, they give it to you and then you're in it with some other girl or some. It kind of haunts you forever. I don't know. Never really happened to me because I have so many damn blankets. I will say that this one is good. This one is made with like individual sections of denim and it's pretty cozy. This is one of the few that actually does get used. Although I am a man, so when I'm at home and I'm cold, I put on a jacket. I never really got the whole blanket thing. <sighs> that was a good gift. Meanwhile, Ray-Bans, Leela, seriously, that daughter. 
What else have I got? Man. Oh, check this out. This is an old belt I got from a family member when I was probably about 10 or 12. Notice that it's been so used it can't even hold a straight line anymore. Yeah, that's how used it is because I use it every day. This is a piece of an animal at one point and now I wear it around my waist. It lasts. If you pick something out, make sure it's going to be around forever. At least if it's like that. Maybe it's something functional like these 3M clips. You can actually do a lot of cool stuff with these. I'll show you a picture here. Yeah. I rigged that up the other day because I was sick of having to walk over a guitar stand. No, I will never play guitar for anybody. I actually just play it alone sometimes. It's kind of like an inner study thing. I just, you know, those long study sessions, it's just kind of nice to wail on a guitar and not know what you're doing. Here's one that I actually got way back in 2007, which for me does count as way back because it's what, like a fifth of my life ago? I'm that young. This is a stethoscope. It's a Lippmann. When I started working at this hospital, I had a cheesy little, you know, one of those trainee scopes. It was bright orange. And I couldn't hear crap out of it because the little diaphragm was so dented. And so I got this, and it even came with a holster, and I taped over it, but it has a little name placard you can put on, and you can get it customized for them so people don't steal it because they will try to steal it. There's something about this that I just grew to love almost instantly, and it's comfortable and it works. When you get something that's quality, you can actually do your job better, and it's such a peace of mind. For this, I was able to just auscultate or listen better every time I went in with a patient. It was awesome. I felt like I was better at doing my job because I didn't have to worry about my technique. I didn't have to worry about my machinery. Before, I would listen to stuff, and I would always be like, eh, did I hear that? Eh, that was hard. With this, it just got rid of those problems altogether. It made me feel like I was better at my job because it was just one less thing to worry about. Seriously, think about it. I know somebody flying a lot in his plane, he's an instructor pilot, and he's still using the old set of earphones from like his very first flight, and he hates them. Seriously, that dude's wife, if he sent this to you, or just happened to leave it out on the desktop while they walked away, and then it's playing, and you're walking by here, and, oh, what is that? It's kind of interesting. Buy him a new set. The guy spends like eight and a half hours a day wearing those headphones. Get him something good. You gotta kind of analyze some of this stuff. If it's something that pisses you off on a regular basis, just get rid of it. Replace it with something better. Allocate funds from something that you need less of. Maybe, I don't know, for me it's like food. If I have a purchase that I want to get that's too expensive for me, I'll allocate money from my food budget and then put it into that thing. And that's just kind of a life management thing. I don't know. Again, all my opinion. So let's say you have the function angle down and you want to look at something that he'll maybe, I don't know, emotionally attached to. That's totally cool. Get him something that he loves, only better which sounds really stupid until you think about one of my favorite books. One of them growing up, White Fang. Also, Alas Babylon, a couple, you know, Prayer for Owen Meany, all these weird books that I love, but maybe other people don't. White Fang's a really easy one to find. So instead of getting just a normal, stupid, and you can already see it in the frame, instead of getting some random, you know, heritage copy from Barnes & Noble that's hardbound, it's good, but do it one better and get an old one off of eBay or even some random bookseller in your town. I'm sure they're around. We have one here. And, I mean, his stock isn't great, but it's better than nothing. This is an old Review of Reviews Company book, and I think it was printed in 1911. It has the old Reader's Digest illustrations. Hope you can kind of see that. One of my favorite books ever, and it will forever have a place on my bookshelf, because this is a treasure to me. Stuff like this, I love it, but it takes it to a next level. This is a heritage level gift. This is something that I want to keep no matter what. I don't care if she dumped me a hundred years ago. I don't care if, you know, I don't know, she cheated on me with, say, six guys. I mean, I wasn't super involved, but still, six is a bit excessive. Really cool gift. Here's one I had to buy for myself because, stupidly, and this is probably my favorite book of all time, The Little Prince. I lent my original copy of this, which was in 1944, I found. It had crayon all over the front. I lent it to her and she never gave it back, but I ended up coming across this one. This is a 1973 copy, I think. Cool gift. Get him his favorite album or something. Get it signed. Make it special. You know, I don't know. Pretty much anything by Justin Vernon will fit. Yeah, you can really see how stereotypically young I am now. Here's something I did make. This is uh, my gift to Last Suspect, my brother, one time. I actually just did a compendium of some of my doodles and drawings and I called it Doodle. Isn't that cute? It's a pun. I kind of did that and it was an accessory gift. To me, an accessory gift is something you give on top of the normal one. So let's say you want to do a real bitchin' get-together gift for your boyfriend this time and actually, let's give him something back. Mm. 
Oh, okay. Something he'll have forever. We'll say it's a Benchmade Contigo, which I really like. Really cool, right? Let's say you give him Benchmade Contigo and Handmade Book of Doodles. Yeah, and even better, you could monetize these. I mean, you could do like t-shirt designs, basically. And trust me, I've thought of it. And if you want, go ahead and put it in like, you know, the review or comments or whatever. Let me know if you'd actually want these, because I'm kind of tempted to make them. I have cool stuff like, I'll just roll in the pictures here. There's a squid plane thing. I don't know. They're not good or anything, but there are some cool ones. There's like a raccoon fishing. There's a hot dog. I don't know. It's weird stuff, but I mean, it's kind of cool. This one, the shark, pretty cool. Anyways, I'll show you those later. So if you're interested in those, let me know, because I'd be more or less interested. I kind of just want them for myself, but... So an accessory gift doesn't have to be necessary, but I like giving it. It's cool to give something that's just, you know, it's an extra. Something that they use every day that they really like, like a box of their favorite drink or their favorite chapstick. This is my favorite now, although the Neutrogena stuff is also pretty cool. Otherwise, I'll just end up with, like, snake mouth as I chew it away. Useful. I used to do... What did I do? I, oh, one year I did a magnet board, and I had this whole piece of steel and, like, rolled the edges on it and then had some 3M strips, which we'll get to those in a second. Rolled it over and then had a couple magnets, and you can glue them to, like, bottle caps or whatever cutesy, you know, stupid-ass crap that people like these days. Just check Pinterest, guys. It's super easy. So you do that, and then you give them, like, a package of socks or something they'll actually use every day. It's kind of nice. It's, you know, it's the one-two. They get something functional, lasts forever, haunts their children, and then they get something they'll use day to day that they enjoy. And it's kind of like money in their pocket. Less money they have to spend on socks or drinks or whatever. You can do gift cards, I guess. Those would be pretty cool too. That's only for someone, you know, super significant. I wouldn't do it for like Ronnie in the office or something unless you want to, I don't know, get closer to Ronnie. Not my business. So some cool stuff that I like. I'm a young guy. I have some fairly stereotypical taste. Honestly, it comes about just because I got sick of rebuying stuff. It gets old buying jackets that are just out of style in a year or just threadbare like most of mine. Literally, I wear my clothes to the point of threadbare because they're just clothes, man. This jacket is an old one from the 70s. This is by a certain brand. I'm actually on the lookout all the time trying to find more of them. It was in Boston. It went out of business. And I'm not going to say the name because I don't want any more competition looking for them because they're still pretty rare. This one is pretty cool. I like cafe racers. Yeah. This one's beat. Also, if you want some more of those, this is an old flight jacket. This was Dad's back in the day. Pretty old, pretty awesome. You want something like that. You want something that has stay in power. You want something you don't have to worry about, something that's not going to just look stupid in 10 years. You want it to be history proof. For me, that's a lot of this old leather crap. That's a lot of, you know, like the Ray-Bans. Those age pretty well. Of course, in the end, I wouldn't put too much stock into my opinion because if I could dress any way I want to, I would look like a cross between Serpico and Screech from Saved by the Bell. This thing, which honestly is just a stand-in for the pistol that the Predator throws to Danny Glover in Predator 2. I wish I had that. Check that clip. Yeah, I wish I had that one. Great gift, Predator. That was awesome. But think about the things he does use. Maybe music. For me, I like music. I like the ATH M50s. I think they are. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, ATH M50s. Show you how good I am. They're about, I think, 100 bucks on Amazon. They sound pretty good. This is one of those things that you can find easily. Just, you know, best headphone reviews. But if you want to kick it up a notch, you can actually go online and find people that make these just awesome. They call them Seamoy amplifiers. So this is like a handmade. This is some dude in his garage just, you know, tooling it together. This one's a single cell. This is just one 9-volt battery, and that's how he puts it together. It has a knurled knob on the outside. I had a couple of those Fio amps, they're like little square ones you plug in. I liked it, but it died really quick, and so it left me looking for replacements. This is actually pretty good. This is my personal setup that I use all the time. This is a Penguin Mint tin. It's the same as that one, but I did two 9-volts. Here's the thing, and here's a good idea. So we'll compare one of these headphones, one of these setups, but just get them the freaking Seamoy amplifier the extra little cable, because the Fio does line out, goes in here, and then you just plug in your headphones to that. But when you do it, get them rechargeable 9-volt batteries. That's the little extra step, that's the extra inch that really puts it into the kick-ass gift territory. Pretty awesome. So with this, and I also have this little, like, Magpul thing, because when I jam it in my backpack or my pocket, it always gets lost, and you don't want to yank it out by the cable. So you grab it by the duct tape, and it's out, ready to go. So, ATHM 50s. I got these because I was always using public transportation, and I already had a pair of these, which I had gotten way back in the day. 
Grado SR60s, I think. Yeah. These are really cool, but they're open. So these things have no ceiling, which means whatever Britney Spears track you're listening to, everyone else on the bus can hear it too. Kind of cool, mostly uncool. So I wanted something that was closed. And nothing says, don't talk to me, weird person, better than these. And I know, you're kind of giving up some opportunities to meet interesting people and, you know, donate to bizarre causes or have people accost you. But seriously, nothing says don't talk to me better than giant big-ass can earmuffs. Awesome. The side note, when you're on public transportation, a person's headphones are considered part of their body, so you can't just go and take them off. It's just kind of a faux pas. Sorry I said faux pas earlier. These ones sound pretty good. I like hooking them up to uh, one of the desktop amplifiers. Works pretty well. I really like it. Other things you can use if you're more into the sport territory stuff, I have tried the earbuds, earbuds, what else? I do like Panasonic, I think they're MXDR50s or something like that. They changed the rubber on them a while back though, and so they pretty much fall apart within six months. This is a pair of Sennheiser Adidas branded, I think they're CX680s. Yeah, CX680 Sports. They have a two year warranty. I've had a pair of these for I think a year and a half. The other ones ended up fraying through in one area, they cut. It's like a Kevlar cable, sweat resistant, blah, blah, blah. These fit in your ears pretty well, and they have the little fin that sticks. Pretty awesome, about 50 bucks, and they'll do a two year warranty. I just got these ones back, so I'm essentially getting two pairs of these really awesome headphones for about 50 bucks. As long as you take care of them, they will last you a long time. The only reason the other one died is because one of the speakers finally went out, which is probably due to the amplifier. But again, my hearing damage aside, really good headphones. Now, if whoever you're buying this for is more of a motorcyclist or they do some around machinery that's kind of loud, I have found the Edemotics, I think they're MC5s, about $60. These are really good with the foam plugs. I like those the best. These are the best ones after trial and error. And, you know, I used all these different headphones trying to figure out ones that would fit under my helmet that would work enough to seal off noise. And then I can just play the comm system through the Bluetooth and I can hear people. You know, it's better than hand signals. These work really well and they have a bunch of different tips. There's all kinds of, you know, little tip replacements you can get. You can take care of them. Another point, generally, if you're going to get a gift that's good, you're going to find replacement tips for it. So like this Zippo lighter, it's one thing to get a lighter, but if you go to the company site and you find out that they also sell the wicks, the flints, the fluid, everything you need to basically overhaul one, that generally means that the base product is going to be around for a long time and people actually need those. Cool companies that stand behind their products like that are getting rarer and rarer because we're being accustomed to buying crap and just rebuying it every couple years. There's a lot to be said to something that has staying power. So, headphones out of the way. You can get these. I think these are online about 50 bucks for a penguin. Not even a penguin. See more. I think I got these ones from Bioscience Geek. He does really good work. There are plenty of other ones out there. So basically, if you find Seamoy, they have good reviews. They're all pretty much the same architecture. Guys will have different individual stuff they do for it. It's kind of hard to go wrong with a lot of them. I've listened to two other ones from different people. They sound really good, too. I just love it. There's nothing better than being able to have some crankable power in your pocket, especially when you're on public transportation, because you can tune out everything. Really cool. So, another thing guys like, gloves. At least more of the tactical-oriented, you know, guys who are out doing cool stuff. Gloves are just cool. There's something about it that protects your hands, more comfortable. If you're like me and you kind of have some sweaty palms, thanks, Dad, for that one. You'll really like having them in the summer and even in the winter. So here's one of my more preferred gloves. And I'm not even saying these as riding gloves. I just like wearing them all the time. And nothing fancy hates them. But they're my Icon Perforated Pursuits. These are actually the ones I wrecked in. You can see just like a little bit of damage back there. Hardly any on the palm. And I kind of accordioned it down. I actually started wearing these after I got my cast off and I found they were so comfortable in day-to-day -day stuff because I'd be on the bike. I would get off and I'd like use different stuff. I'd be playing around on, you know, my phone or something like that. I'd keep walking around and then I just found I could get away with using them everywhere because they're touch capable. And honestly, I've just started liking it. There's something nice about being able to wear gloves and not touch shopping cart handles and worry about getting sick. Kind of cool. So those I think are about $75 to $90. They're expensive. They're full leather, perforated. They flow really well. Probably not the best winter gloves. I personally, if I'm going to be doing most stuff, I just choose Impact Mechanics. I really can't say enough good about them. They've been really good to me over the years. This is probably, not this one, but I have a pair. I have three pairs that I've worn through now. You can use them for anything. I probably wouldn't go biking around in them, maybe dirt biking. They have some light armor on the top. It's more glued on. I've had one finger separate on me over all these years, and how I've been using them, I'm really surprised. I've gotten them wet, cold. I had one that got burned through in the top and 
amazingly, I didn't get scarred on my hand, so that was pretty cool. So you can go with the Impacts, nothing fancy, of course, prefers the Originals and the Covert Black Colors. Those are always his favorites. I don't like these as much for the winter, and I always have a bad habit of getting really cold in them. For some reason, this tiny little armor thing, at least psychologically, I feel like I'm warmer. Good idea. Get them some mechanics gloves. That's more of a stocking stuffer. They're totally awesome. But think about other stuff you like. Here's another thing. Random stuff at this point. This is an old clipboard. It's made of metal. It's not going to fall out and, you know, just completely go to crap anytime soon. This is a Saunders brand. As you can tell, it's kind of been around for a long time. All kinds of different stickers and stuff on it. And actually, I think we've used this one on camera before. Pretty cool. I like stuff like that. The metal one's really cool. You can like use it as a straight edge and draw easy stuff and do lines and stuff. Some of them have rulers and all that. Pretty nice. One of those small things, if he's someone in the medical profession, he probably needs his own clipboard. At least I did. I always liked having mine instead of the big old box ones. So that's cool. Another thing. CC Motorcycle Collective makes one of these. Also, A Case has a Chinese version, as I have bought, you can see. This is an iPhone wallet, so you can just put your iPhone in it and have all your cards in one place. I got sick of the whole, you know, wallet, keys, then phone. It just kind of combines two of them into one thing. May not be for you, but it's been working out really awesome for me. I like that. The CC one, I think, is 60 bucks, made in the U.S., made in Oregon. It's awesome. It's a beautiful piece of work. If you want to go Chinese on it, Amazon has them for, I think, $35 or something like that. Speaking of cheap Amazon stuff. Over the years, I've, you know, naturally with the Ray-Bans and watching stuff like T2 and Predator and all that stuff, I thought sunglasses were really cool. So I have gotten a lot of different ones. You can always get them sunglasses. Those are cool. I got these a couple years ago, and I haven't worn them that much, mostly because you get kind of less visibility on the sides. I don't like that. I like aviators purely out of function. A lot of people think it's just a style thing. I've actually worn them as long as I can remember. I had this really cool pair of like glacier glasses with the leather flips on the side. Really cool. Great for a six-year-old. Helps them get all kinds of tail. These are some I started getting off of Amazon. They're like cheesy. You can basically get three for ten bucks. The optical quality on some of them is kind of hit or miss. They're not polarized, but you don't have to worry about leaving them in a cockpit or a car or anything. That's kind of why I got them. I was always leaving them on planes and I was doing stuff, you know, leaving them in the back of someone else's car. It's just one less thing to worry about. And you can frame it to fit your face. You don't have to worry when it gets scratched, because I did buy a pair of uh, some nicer ones one time. And I ended up going power washing in them, and I kind of got them scratched like the first day. You don't have any problem like that with $3 glasses. You just kind of scratch them, and you're like, eh. That's one of the cases where disposable maybe is better. So, if you want cheaper stuff, we already went through the gloves, we went through the music. Those are the big things. Let's say you want to give something a little more, I don't know, decorative. This is about as decorative as I can think. Get him some 3M hooks and give him stuff to hook him on. Like you can do these, you can hang up motorcycle helmets. And if you got cool looking helmets, that's some cool wall art. You can also get him something purely decorative. If you have to, just realize you're probably going to hate it. If you hate it, they'll probably love it. It's just a weird little teeter-totter effect that we have. Stuff like this Hot Toys T700. The reason I got this, and it is purely decorative, is because I wanted one so bad as a kid. It used to be my dream to have like a full one-to-one -one scale T800 and it'd just be awesome. We could run around and he could like come to school and impress the hot girl in the class with how awesome I was with my life-size Terminator. Never happened. This is as close as I've ever come and even has light-up eyes. <laughs> Isn't that precious? Other things. Knives. Now on the project we always talk about knives, blades, firearms, all that stuff. Here are the ones that I actually use. When I use a knife, and my views are very different from nothing fancies, I like something I don't have to worry about. That usually means something simpler, a bit less expensive. That being said, you're still going to see some expensive steel. First one, this is a Benchmade... Oh, I always forget the name of this. Some designer dude. Someone in the comments will help you out on that. That's still fairly expensive. I like it. It's straight. You know, it hides easily in the pocket. It follows a pants seam. No one really notices it. When you need to, it comes right out. It's just, it's simple. My right hand's still busted, so I don't have super flipping strength. I love the Gerber Harzi Air Ranger. Have ever since I grabbed it. There's just something really cool and tactile about the body of it. I love it. Again, I'm not like a huge knife nerd. I don't really care about the steels. I just want something that I can integrate into my life and just use. Benchmade Triage, I've actually used for a while now. I really love the seatbelt cutter, and more than anything, I use it to cut open some funky packaging, like bizarre boxes and stuff. I'll just think, oh, if only I could, oh yeah, hook it in, pull it, cut it. I know it's not meant for that, it's meant for a seatbelt, but I don't care. It's my knife and I'll cut stuff how I want. 
Also has a glass breaker on there. Kind of cool. I usually use it just to like dent stuff and mark things. I don't know. That's just me. Man, all these are expensive, so never mind. I think the Harzi is probably the cheapest one. Uh, this is the Spyderco Nabaha, I think. This is, it's made in Taiwan, and I wonder if they could emblazon that any bigger and louder, because it's not very awesome. But you can tell I use it. This one is just pure cool. It's carbon fiber. This is a, uh, I had some fun times with this knife. It's just cool. It's very impressive when you pull it out. It is probably a little too overt for me in a lot of cases, but I like carrying a variety of stuff. This is actually probably my one of my more favorite blades. This is one of our TNP Ultratechs. You don't see many of these. I can't really carry it that often just because I'm so afraid of losing it. I've lost a Zycar in the past, so, you know. I don't really like being the jackass that loses his blades. This is my favorite blade of all time, and I think I've mentioned it before on camera. Ever since I held it, I love it. It's just balanced. It has this really cool weight in the hand. It, like, kind of angles forward. Oh, I wish my hand weren't busted for this. It's also cold. But Spider Co. Barong. Yeah, it's used. It's kind of getting beat up. It's probably got some oil on it right now because I use it all the time. Love it. Love that blade. So if you were to think about giving a gift of a blade, you want it to be something good. We have all kinds of playlists for, like, smaller, cheaper blades, Spider Co., you know, Soggy, just any of those. They'll make great presents. It's something the guy would use all the time. It's functional and it has kind of a sculpture-like cool that just, it's hard to match. There's something about knives and guns that we just love. Other things, a uh, Red Rider BB gun, if you really want to have some fun. And this is kind of like, you know, maybe it's a redneck date idea, but you get some army men, preferably the bigger ones, but you can like set them up in the backyard with all their board. And then you just shoot at them with Red Riders. It's all like probably 70 bucks with the army men, like two thirty dollar Red Riders. You can just sit there and plank at them all the time. Kind of fun when you're bored. Better than just sitting around and watching like The Bachelor or whatever stupid ass crap is on. Just an idea. Here's my custom one that we had. This is one of the Chief AJ models. This is actually what I used to kill Jerusalem crickets when they tried to get into my room. Those things are huge and they're big targets for that. So pretty cool. So that's pretty much it. Those are all the more interesting gifts I've gotten. As you can tell, I don't really have many of them. So think about it. Think about what you're getting somebody. Think about what they want. Think about what you want out of that gift in the future. Do you want them to have it in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? Do you want it to appreciate in value? How much are you willing to spend? Because you don't have to spend a lot to get a good gift. As you can see, you know, a pair of mechanics gloves from a girlfriend, I would totally dig right now. That'd be awesome. I would love getting like an office suite of useful scissors and eraser, you know, a bunch of pens that I use. Pretty awesome. Good pens, I don't know. You can find them. There's all kinds of cool stuff. If not, you can always do something handmade. Just make sure it's really cool. Um, I don't know. I haven't really gotten a lot of handmade stuff that I really like, mostly because no one ever gives me handmade stuff. I usually get weird stuffed animals. Don't get stuffed animals for adult males. We don't know what to do with them. I mean, at best, we'll give them to a child, probably ours in the future, and even then, it's just weird. It's not like we're really saving all that much money, given the price of stuffed animals. And since your Beanie Baby thing didn't really pan out in the 90s, I wouldn't really count on that to appreciate in value. So really, just stay away from stuffed animals. Blankets, you don't have to worry about. Basically, if it's fuzzy and soft, we don't really need it. We want stuff that's functional. So think about what they want. I don't know. Try and get it for them. Anyways, I did my part. This is Tactical Doodle signing off. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments. I'll probably pay attention to them for about a week from now, after that things tend to die down. So if this video is posted about a year and a half ago, don't even waste your time on it because odds are I'm probably not checking it that often. I'm really bad about answering comments and mail and stuff just because uh, there's just so much of it. Oh man, it's so much easier just to go ride motorcycles or something. Motorcycles. Buy my motorcycle. Anyways, if you guys want a part two, I'll talk about some of my favorite guns, favorite stuff. Um, I don't know, motorcycle mods. I'm kind of just doing this to, I don't know, just kind of rap about stuff I like. So while I'm going to show you a couple things that in the project we don't really address, stuff like, I don't know, practical things, pens, I guess, um, music stuff. <laughs> this is a solid pull. Or turn a pair of his favorite jeans into cutoffs, because it's every guy's secret fantasy to be one of the skate sharks. You know, put it somewhere, throw magnets on it, anywhere you want. You instantly have your own little fridge board. <laughs> Sweet.